Now let's talk about popcorn effects, the new effect system in Rising. Let's go over a few things about it. I built this area to place a waterfall effect. So let's go to Tools, Effects, Water, and grab a waterfall effect. Let's place it here and open up the properties. Enabled turns the effect on and off. Looped will loop the effect. If the waterfall wasn't already looping, this effect would make it loop over and over. Now let's get down to width. This is the width of the waterfall. Height is how far the water falls before it fades out. Speed is how much force the water has going over the falls. A higher number is more force. Foam intensity is the amount of foam in the waterfall. And density is how much water is going over the falls. Sound volume changes the volume of the effect sound. Zero is minimum, one is maximum. Watercolor gives you a color picker to pick the color of the water. And foam color lets you pick the color of the foam. Now let's go back to time skip enabled. This option starts the effect after a full animation cycle has completed. For example, let's turn off the effect. Now with time skip enabled checked, you see when we turn the effect on, the water falling has already reached the ground and the effect continues to play. Now let's try time skip enabled unchecked. You see now the water starts from the top of the falls, like someone opened a floodgate. It's a good idea when optimizing your tracks to set the enable checkbox to a variable. This way you can turn the effect off after the router has passed it and you don't see it anymore. To do this, we'll need an area trigger, a set value event, and a variable data source. We'll start by opening the waterfalls properties, going to enabled, hitting triangle, and connecting it to the variable data source. Next, we'll open up the variable data source and set its value to 1. When setting the enabled option to a number, 0 is always off and 1 is always on. Let's also uncheck Reset at Checkpoint Restart. This will prevent the waterfall from starting back up if someone resets a checkpoint later down the track. OK, now once the waterfall is out of the router's view, we can turn it off. So let's place an area trigger here. Let's open up the properties and connect the on hit option to the set value event. Now, in the set value event properties, we connect the event target to the variable and set its value to zero. This will turn the effect off. Now, when the router hits the area trigger, the set value event sets the variable to zero and turns off the waterfall. Now let me show you another effect with different options. Here, we're gonna make the glass break and add a glass shattering effect. Let's go to Tools, Triggers and Events, Triggers, and grab an area trigger. Now under Events, let's grab the Break Event and the Effect Event. And over in Effects, under Destruction, let's grab the Glass Shattering Effect. First, let's open the Glass Shatter Effect properties. Enabled, we've seen before. We will just leave this enabled for now, so we can see our adjustments. Looped, as you can see, loops the effect once it's been enabled. Width is the width of the effect, height is the height of the effect, and depth is how close it comes to the camera. Small pieces density determines how many small pieces of glass are used, large pieces density determines how many large pieces are used, and speed is how much force is used to scatter the glass pieces. Emission roundness is the shape of the effect. Zero is a cube and one is a sphere. Sound volume is the volume of the effect sound. Small pieces color brings up a color picker for you to select the color of the small pieces of glass. Large pieces color does the same thing but for the larger pieces. Now let's go back and turn off enabled and looped and we will use the effect event to set off the effect. Now let's place an area trigger right in front of the glass sheet. Open the properties and connect the hit to the break event. Now let's open the break event and connect the event target to the glass sheet. And continue the impulse through the select event filter to the effect event. Now open the effect event and connect the event target to the glass shatter effect. Now let's give it a test. 